Hello, geometry students. How's everything going? Okay, so we're going to do our review for the Pythagorean Theorem quiz. So if you looked here, you can see my sloppy handwriting. You can see that basically all I did with these problems was I changed the numbers. So if we go through this, you'll know how to do every problem, just you have to use different numbers. You plug in those different numbers. Of course, in question one that we're looking at right here, you're not going to use 8 and 6. There's going to be two other numbers, but they're going to be in the same position. There'll be a number here, there'll be a number here, though the x will stay there. That's it. That literally is it. Okay, so the first one is using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a hypotenuse. Now, what's a hypotenuse? At this point, we need to know what the hypotenuse is. Well, we have a right triangle. These only work with right triangles, the Pythagorean theorem. So it has to be a right triangle. Someone has to give you a right angle there. And across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. So this, in our case, x is the hypotenuse. OK, so I have a hypotenuse. I have an x. Same thing. Now i got to remember Pythagorean's theorem. Well, Pythagorean says this. He says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's just an algebraic equation we can use to solve this problem. Now, c is always the hypotenuse every time. That, that never, ever changes. C is always the hypotenuse. So whatever number is here, whatever number is across from the right triangle, you put that in. So I'm going to keep the hypotenuse being red. I'll fill in the rest. So a squared, well, I can pick out whichever one of these. I'll choose whichever one. I'm going to say 6 squared, because that's the smaller number. I'll start off with the smaller number plus b squared, well, which is the other one? 8 squared. So I'm using these two numbers here and here as my two legs, if you want to call them that, the non-hypotenuses. Now, the hypotenuse goes all the way at the end. In our case, for this problem, hypotenuse is x. So I always put the hypotenuse here, and I square it. OK, so then I go on my calculator. Inside my calculator, I'm just going to do these problems. 6 squared. Now, 6 second x2. Okay, so excuse me. 6 squared. If you know how to do this in the calculator, that's fine. 6 squared and hit enter, and you get the answer is 36. For some reason, because I know you're there and I'm not here, there with you. I don't know if you'd want me there with you. It'd be weird. But 6 squared is just really 6 times 6. So whenever you're doing these problems, just remember you can... Multiply the number by itself. 6 times 6 is the same as doing 6 squared. And you get the same answer. So 8, I can either answer as 8 squared, if I know how to do that on my calculator at home, or decimals, use decimals, or I could use 8 times 8. Honestly, 8 times 8 is 64. Now, on the other end, I got this, and I can't, I don't know what, I'll just leave it x squared. OK. So I'm, I'm working along here. This is pretty, pretty easy so far. Not that big a deal. This is probably, remember, having to square numbers is probably the hardest part at this point. Next step. Let's add these two numbers up. OK, well, 36 plus 64 is 100. Oh, did it in red. I apologize. It is 100. equals our x squared. Now, I want to know what x is. I don't want to know what x squared is, right? Because the hypotenuse is x. The hypotenuse is not x squared. So in order to do that, I must take the square root of this side. I must take the square root of this side. This is the one thing you're going to have to figure out, taking square roots. OK, I'm guaranteeing you these are not always going to work out as nice as this one. So square root of x squared is just a simple rule. You just have to remember it's x. That's going to come up a lot. What's the square root of x squared? Trust me. And what's the square root of 100? Well, in this type of calculator, I just have to hit second square root of 100. So you need to know to do this. You can do this, I know, on the Apple phone. 
Okay, their calculator. You take you take the Apple phone, iPhones, Apple phones. Look how old I am. Okay, the Apple phones, these iPhone things that are so popular with the kids these days. And you take the calculator and you turn it sideways. So you go to calculator, and then you turn it sideways, and you have a option to take a square root of a number. Okay, square root of 100 is just 10. So that's it. So in this problem, the hypotenuse, this answer is just 10. That's all we had to do. Now remember, as you're watching this video, okay, as you're watching this video, you can always pause it, rewind it, look at it again, go over the ones that you have problems with. You know what? When you're taking the quiz, I'm sending the quiz home with you. You're going to send it back to me. This video, hint, hint, is available during the quiz. I'm not taking it down. So as you're working on it, you can turn on the video in the background. Oh, how did he do question one again? Oh, there's different numbers, but he shows me how to do it the right way. Okay, so, next problem. Now, here's a problem. When I'm looking at it, I see there's something different about it. It may not look different to you right away, but you'll see it in a second. Right triangle, because Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. But this means something here. That my hypotenuse is 5 in this case. In the last question, hypotenuse was x. Now my hypotenuse is always across from the right angle to 5. I got a 4 and an x. Okay, so it's on my other sides. So now this is going to be different. So when I'm using Pythagorean's theorem, I'll write this out one more time. I know this has always got to be the hypotenuse, the C, when I use this problem. Well, this case, the hypotenuse is not x. It's 5. So they do work slightly differently here. So again, I'll go with the green-red combination. So a squared and b squared, well, one side is x squared. The other side is 4 squared. And finally, this last side is my hypotenuse. Five squared. So C is always the hypotenuse, this last one. So now that the problem is when we're solving for this, it's going to create a little bit, well, almost one more step to the problem. Okay, so I got these numbers. Let's find out what four and five are squared. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the uh, old-fashioned way. Four times four is sixteen. Well, this one's sixteen. Five times five. Oh, it's twenty-five. So that's my hypotenuse. Now over here. I just bring down the x squared, because x squared is x squared, there's nothing we can do with that. Now since I am trying to solve for x, I gotta isolate the variable, if you remember that from geometry, I mean algebra. So I am going to subtract 16 from both sides, because I want to get x on this side of the equal sign all by itself. So 16 minus 16, just 0 x squared comes down, that's how I kind of wanted it, equals 25 minus 16. That gives me the number 9. So after I did that, this, so this is the one extra step you add when it, hypot, hypotenuse is, is not the unknown. When you know the hypotenuse, you add this one extra step. x squared equals 9. Again, this works out to a dice round number. Next step I have to do is I have to take a square root of both sides. x squared is just x, which is what we want. Square root of 9 in the calculator, you have to hit second square root of 9. It's 3. Now, if you remember your perfect squares, you'll notice that 109 or 2 of the perfect squares. Well, there you go, x equals 3. Not too bad of a problem. It's just one step harder than the first problem. Thus, one step is this part. 
That's the one extra step that we have to do. All right, let's move on. So remember, if you lost and you want to go back, watch this. Key to remember with the problem is the hypotenuse is always this C whenever you do this problem. Write out this problem first. First thing I would do is I write out this problem every time. I figure out where the hypotenuse is. And I put the hypotenuse in that C. Then the A and the B, I put there and there. They could be X's or they could be numbers. Work out the problem. So you have two examples. So let's work on example number three. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to move a little bit faster with these. Okay, so verse two. This is a problem. Again, when we're going to look at it, the right angle is here. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So in this case, x is my hypotenuse. Using our formula, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is getting a little repetitive. So I always put in the c first. Well, the c in this case is an x. The hypotenuse is an x. This is always the hypotenuse. I don't know how many times I could stress it, but I will keep stressing it. Equals the rest of this stuff. So I got to put in a squared. You can put it in any order. I'm going to change things up. I'm going to put the small, the bigger number first. Seven squared plus five squared equals x squared. Seven times seven, if I put that in the calculator, gives me 49. Five times five, put it in the calculator, and I will get 25. And I'll just leave the box here, this side, x squared, because I can't figure out what x times x is. It's just x squared. Then I'm going to add these two numbers. 49 plus 25. 74. Now this is one of the first weird ones we're getting. 74 equals x squared. Now some people are going to tell you to solve for the easiest radical. I am not simplifying radicals here. I'm not going to ask you. I just want the numbers. So square root of this side, square root of this side. Square root of 74 is not going to work out. It's not one of the perfect squares. There's a square root of 81 above it and a square root of uh, 64 below it. It's not one of those. So I'm just going to put that in the calculator and see what happens. So square root of x squared is just x. And that is equal to what is the square root of 74? Second. Square root of 74. 8.602325267. It's a radical number, but that's okay. I'm going to ask everyone to round it to the nearest hundredth. So I just want the, the number, 8, and I want the next two decimal points after that, 0 0.60 for this case. It's not bad. Okay, don't be afraid of decimals. So yes, there could be questions where the answer is a decimal. Keep that in mind. Don't think you made a mistake if you got a decimal. Question four. Oh boy, we're moving on here. This is going to be a long video. Question four. Here we go again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This always being the hypotenuse. Well, what's the hypotenuse in this problem? Here's my right angle. Across from the hypotenuse is the number 17. So in this problem, my hypotenuse is 17. So over here, C, I'll fill it in first before I do anything else. 17 squared. So this is one of those problems where I have it kind of backwards. So the other two sides are X and 8. So I'm going to write X squared plus 8 squared. X squared, we just bring down. 8 times 8 is 64. 17 squared, I can't even do that one in my head. I don't even know what 17 squared is. So I'm just going to do 17 times 17 in my calculator. 
I get the answer of 289. Oh, I should have wrote that in red. I'll go over it in red. Now, the next thing I got to do is I got to get x by itself. Subtract 64 from both sides. That goes to 0. x squared equals 289 minus 64. Comes to 225, which I actually think this is going to work out to a nice number. So I got to square root both sides. Okay, x squared, square root of x squared is just x equals, what's the square root of 225? We got lucky. This is another perfect square. 225, I knew it was a perfect square. Square root of 225 is just 15. Don't count on them to all be perfect squares and having numbers. You get something like number three, where we did... And so we got a decimal, so be prepared. I just happened to luck out and pick uh, a perfect square again. All right, let's move on. Five and six, we're getting near the end. Now, next one says, use the Pythagorean theorem to show if the following triangle is a right triangle or not. Sorry for the bad 16. Now this one, we have to look at a little bit differently. Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared plus c equals c squared, only works for right triangles. It doesn't work for any other type of triangle. So if this number is equal to this number, it's a right triangle. But if it doesn't, then it's not a right triangle. Okay, so let's think about this real quick. So a squared plus b squared, well, if this was a right triangle, I would say, well, the hypotenuse is always across from the biggest side. So this must be the biggest side is 16. So 16 must be the hypotenuse, if, if it were a right triangle. If I can prove it's a right triangle, 16 is the, is the key there. So this would be the hypotenuse over here. And the next best option for the a squared plus b squared is... 10 squared plus 12 squared equals 16 squared. 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. Plus 12 times 12 is 144. It's equal to 16 squared. Well, what's 16 squared? 16 squared, I'm 16 times 16. I'm putting it in my calculator. I get this number 200. And 56. 100 plus 144 is 244, and it's equal to 256. This is a not a true statement. If these two sides were equal, it would be a right triangle. But even though I have these numbers, and it, it kind of looks like the picture shows a right triangle, it is not a right triangle. And I want you to label that not a right triangle. Show the work and say not a right triangle. If it's a right triangle, then you say, oh, it's a right triangle. But this shape here, this is not 90 degrees. It must be something like 88 degrees or 92 degrees. It's close, but it's not 90 degrees. Okay, question six. Okay, so this video is getting long here, so that's all right. This is all you're doing is you're uploading this video, watching this video, and doing these problems and handing them in. Okay, so next problem. The sides of a triangle measure 6, 8, and 9. Use the Pythagorean theorem to show that it is an acute, right, or obtuse triangle. Well, there's some rules to this. I look at Pythagorean theorem. There's two ways, there's three ways to cope. Just from the last problem, we know if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then it's a right triangle. I'm going to say right triangle. Now, if a squared plus b squared is less than 
c squared. It's an obtuse triangle. Now, if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, we have an acute triangle. Okay, let's do this. So, if this was a triangle and 6, 8, and 9, 9 is the biggest side. So, I'm going to say, oh, biggest side is always the hypotenuse in a right triangle. So, if this is a, a right triangle, hypotenuse is 9. So, let's put this information in. So, 9 squared. Put the rest of the information in. Let's figure out for this thing. Uh, a squared, I can make 6 squared plus 8 squared. I put in the other two sides. 6 times 6, 36. 8 times 8 is 64. Uh, I feel like we did this before. 9 squared. 9 squared. 9 times 9 is, if you're checking your calculator, it is 81. Now what we're going to see here is 36 plus 64. This is very similar to another problem we did at the first. This adds up to 100. This is 81. Look how easy this is going to be. So how can I determine which triangle it is? Well, 100 is greater than 81. So this means that this is true. And I would write this is an acute triangle. We don't have to look at it. We already know. All right. Last two problems. 20 minutes. Let's see if I can get this in in 20 soon. Okay, so another problem. There's two ways to do this problem. You can remember, I'm going to show it once on the screen, the 45-45-90 triangle rule. Okay, so that saying is S, S, S square root of 2. So if they, whatever these sides are, S is just the square root of 2 times that number. Okay, so looking at that in mind, can I get both of them in here? I'm going to try. Hold on. Using that rule. See the rule? Okay. Here's what I can do. I can say, well, S is really X in our case. So this is X. Well, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this also has to be X. So I, they're both the same. That's an interesting thought. And 20, then, is equal to x times the square root of 2. Now, if I do that, I say, well, I want to get x by itself because I want to find out what exactly x is. I can divide both sides by the square root of 2. So that tells me x equals 20 divided by the square root of 2. I'm not allowed to leave a radical on the bottom, so I will square root of 2 on both sides. This becomes 2, 20, square root of 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10, square root of 2. I don't know. That's too much work. I think of it this way. I think of Pythagorean theorem. So that's one way to do it. Keep it in mind. That's how you can do it using this rule. Take away this rule. When I have these two x's, I'm going to plug in some numbers, okay? So I have a squared plus b squared plus equals c squared. c squared is the hypotenuse. In this case, my hypotenuse is 20. a squared is just x. b squared is just x. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared equals 20 squared. I don't know what 20 squared. What the heck is 20 squared? 20 squared is 400. Take these numbers. I divide both sides by 2 because I want to get rid of this one. Cross it out. x squared equals 200. Almost done. I got to take the square root of both sides to figure out what x is. Square root of 200, square root of x squared is this x. Square root of 200, I have no idea what this is. Uh, 
is 14.14. 14. Now I'm betting 10 square root of 2 is the same as 14 for 14. Let's see. 10 times the square root of 2. Same answer. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so there we can do it two different ways. Me, my mind wants to do it that way. If you remember the rules, and you, all you have to do is come back to this video to remember the rules, or go to your notes from the other classes, you'll have it there. Finally, this one. Bonus. I don't give extra credit on, I don't give uh, help on bonuses, so this is a way to up your score. Now, the rule is this. So, I can actually do this real quick. Boom. I want to find out what x and y is. Let's find what s is. Well, x is really x in this case. x is two times, this is twice as big as this. So if this is 6, this side has to be 3. For this one here, this long one, this has to be s times the square root of 3. Well, I already know what s is. It's 3. So this is 3 square root of 3. That's pretty darn easy. Okay? If you remember this rule, this is the easiest bonus I think I've ever given. If you don't, it's hard. All right. I'm signing out because I don't want to have a huge video, but I'm sending it out to you. I'll see you tomorrow.